Kind of reminds me of Sloane from Berserk. But she, he, it. <laughs> they. Which pronoun are we gonna use? Yo, what's going on, you guys? This is your boy RVG, aka the Random Black Gamer, here with me, myself, and I on the ones and twos. And this is We Ain't Reactions, the place where I react to everything I've never seen. And today, we are jumping into that crazy, chaotic world of Warhammer 40k for reaction to every Warhammer 40k faction explained by none other than Bricky himself. Last time we had an exceptional turnout. You guys really enjoyed that reaction and we met that 1000k light goal relatively fast and I am appreciative of that because that shows that you guys are ready for more and you're ready to see my thoughts on this. Um, I just want to say that you know even though it was positive there were some people that were a bit disappointed because they don't really hold Bricky's videos in high regard. There were, understandably so, a lot of mistakes made in his video essay, which I can say that at the end of the day, we're all humans, guys. We all make mistakes. I'm pretty sure there's not a day that goes by where uh, Bricky, you know, kind of face palms on some of the things that he says. I do that when I make videos and I realize that I can't take some of those things back, especially after those videos amass a lot of views. Um, but yeah, like, I understand it. At the end of the day, I feel like the overall goal, the biggest objective when it comes to these type of videos is to get people intrigued and moved to actually delve into the lore for themselves, which is what I did. You know, I noticed that there were some things that I read beforehand before watching the video, such as uh, the God of Mankind or the God Emperor of Mankind. Um, you know, what I'm saying the, the Omni Messiah himself, Space Jesus. Uh, like, I don't think Bricky mentioned the fact that his son played a part in killing him. And I also don't think that um, he mentioned that the king or the emperor was not the biggest fan of religion. You know, I always thought that was kind of like ironic that the emperor was an anti-religious guy, but he wasn't necessarily an atheist because he was aware of the gods of chaos. But the gods of chaos was like the driving force behind his son actually inflicting a fatal wound to him and putting him on the throne. And I think it's very prolific that the emperor himself, though he's mostly dead, you know, I would say like 98% of him is gone. That small fraction of him still clings on to life because he loves humanity that much and he wants to see it thrive without chaos consuming them. So, yeah. The Emperor's will still burn strong even though he's being used as a tool by all of these heretical zealots out in the universe, you know? It's, it's crazy that humanity kind of fell into this religious cult and they, they've kind of manifested these things, but that's just how things go when it comes to humanity. We continue to evolve and based on certain influences, we become things that, you know, the, the four founders, the, the founding fathers, they may not like, so yeah. But uh, anyways, since we are uh, now out of, you know, the Imperium section, we are going to be jumping into, you know, the uh, the chaotic section where we get to see all these things go on with these heretics, you know, if they want to call it that, you know, the xenophobic humans that we are. We label these people heretics and, you know, we got the xeno races. So let's say we go ahead and jump into this, guys. I'm sorry for the long one. Oh, yeah. I also want to say. I know some of you guys do not like the fact that I talk over Bricky's commentary, um, especially since my voice tends to clash with the videos and you would prefer that I would pause the videos. I, I say, yeah, you know, maybe that is the case, but I'm one of those people that don't like when somebody constantly pauses a video because I feels like it, I feel like it draws out the video. I, I don't know why. I just I do, you know. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to lower my mic source audio and amplify Bricky's audio because I do think that was one of the things that was heard in the video as well. You know, the long, the, the loud, robust audio from me and you know, the kind of tamed audio coming from the actual video. So yeah, but without further ado, without all that long winded shit that I just got out of the way, let's go ahead and jump to this video. It's gonna be part two of every single Warhammer 40K faction explain. Let's get it. Hey all, this is part two in a two part series. Part dose. Warhammer races. If you haven't seen part one yet, we do the Imperium of Man. You can check that out in the description and I highly recommend you watch that to get context for this episode. All if right. you have, go ahead and Keep on watching. So after an entire episode of nothing but humans, we can now talk about chaos, which involves yes. humans again. 
but a little bit less. We also got demons. The crazy mofos. I thought someone grabbed my ass. What? <laughs> my heart, Nick. So, as I've mentioned many times before, we've discussed the warp, the immaterium, the hellish landscape, the purgatory dimension realm yeah. between the material realm of our existence. Now, in the warp, it's terrifying, horrible, there are demons everywhere, things are crazy, all your minds and thoughts and emotions get projected there. It is both formless and empty, it is vast and tiny, it uh, obeys the laws of time and physics while simultaneously does absolutely nothing of the sort it is a hodgepodge and it is everything yet it is also nothing horrifying shit and there are four gods that permeate in chaos and the warp these are the four major chaos gods and if we wish to learn about chaos we need to learn about each and every single one of these chaos gods yeah First apparently up, they despise the emperor of mankind corn is your classic satan he is all about anger, murder, fighting, blood, guts, death. You ever heard the term blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne? That's Korn. Mm. The whole idea is that he is all about the fury and strength of battle. Why do you look he like he got the berserker where armor on? Blood comes from so long as blood is flowing. He wants to fight and murder and carnage and slaughter and death, death, death. This death, guy death. consumes blood that like a wine punch. Korn. Very simple to understand. Next mm -hmm. up you have Zeech, and Zeech, Zeech is the god of change. However, the god of change, it permeates in so many different other ways. He's the most eldritch of all the demon gods. He has this weird way to always be plucking at the strings of the universe. He's always conniving and scheming and doing his best to cause as much little bullshit as he can. Zeech is, is unknowable. Everything that makes sense, he will and won't do. Every future and setting and every type of, of destiny or fate is all foretold mm. and also changeable. It is set in stone while also completely random. He knows what everything is going to happen and also that none of it's going to happen. You would ask Zeech a question. Sounds like the executives at Marvel and Disney. Questions. And those questions lead to the heat death of the universe, which asks four answers to those questions. And then he thinks to himself, what are questions even really? And are you even asking the questions or are you simply <laughs> giving paths to answers what and is life other horseshit zeech is just <laughs> i'm gonna fuck with stuff he is yes and he is no he is the understanding and he is complexity he is unknowable he is the thread the god of he is, is the reddit Very thread bizarre. every reddit thread out there i don't i don't know why next up we got papa Nurgle. Ooh, boy, Papa cooking Nurgle, up some nasty. He loves you for who you are probably not he will murder you just the same but papa nurgle is about rot pestilence, death, and decay. He, he is funky. the end of everything. Him and Zeech do not like each other very much because where Zeech represents change and adjustment, Nurgle represents stagnation and death. He is all about miasma and pestilence and large bloat and pus and, mm. and organs and people just being sedentary, sloth. He is the idea that everything will rot and decay and die. Nothing is certain besides decay and death. All of us will end up the same way and broken down through just sheer never-ending decomposition. That is so nasty. So the joke that Nurgle always loves you is generally because of that. Because we all end up the same. We all rot and we all die and wither. That's Nurgle, and he's got a general theme of, of course, pestilence and and different kinds of diseases and sickness mm. and things of that nature. That's generally Nurgle. He's probably the reason why I had this well large abscess under my armpit. He chunk! Finally, we have the youngest Ooh. of the Chaos Gods, and that is Slanesh, also known as the Prince of Pleasure or the God of Unspeakable Excess. Slanesh is generally referred Androgynous. to with sex. But it's not only sex. Is it a guy or a chick or is it just like a mixture of all? So that's just, just the idea of the senses of the body being cranked to not just 11, but more like 17. See, we'll discuss Sonesh a little bit more. Kind of reminds me of Sloan from Berserk. They done fucked up. But she, he, it, whatever. <laughs> they? Which the pronoun are we going to use? Of emotions. And therefore, sex is generally a large <laughs> part of it. However, it's mostly pain and torture. Lots of pain, torture, but sometimes sexually related or drug related. Lots of drugs. 
Lots of drugs. What about the so pleasure aspect? Off on everything. Extremes in happiness, extremes in sadness, extremes in pain and sadism and masochism, and of course that goes along with the sex part of it as Whips well. Whips and chains. It's generally referred to with sex because of the color scheme, very purple, lots of exposed genitalia. A lot of their models have like exposed nipples and stuff. Purple rain. And that is generally the theme you go for from a physical side, but it really embodies everything, oh, mainly yeah. pain. And and also the, the excessive pain and emotions. boobs. So when it comes down Team to milk motels. Have things like spikes for all you boob fans out there. Any kind of BDSM style gear because it is unspeakable excess. The prince of pleasure. Everything in excess to the point where it is just sheer frightening. That is Slanesh in a nutshell. A little bit bizarre and a little hard to describe sometimes. But as we talk more about the Dark Eldar later in this video, you'll understand it far, far better and far more than you'd want to. Mm. You might be thinking, why would anyone ever want to join Chaos? They all look horrifying, screwed up, and just frightening things, right? Well, the thing is, is that, of course, one, your mind is put into the warp and the materium, so you can be easily swayed by chaos demons when you get into your head, especially if you're a psyker. Sometimes... I wonder if that's what happened to Horus. ...mentally strong people, whether they be civilians or, say, low-level guardsmen or conscripts, can be easily swayed by this and become chaos cultists and stuff, and they serve their dark gods and whatever god they personally refer. However, and this might seem strange, chaos in their own right isn't necessarily evil. See, the warp is every manifestation of emotion and being, every soul, every thing of existence. This includes all the good things. Mm. All the different chaos gods have another side to their coin. Corn might be death, murder, slaughter, slaughter. But, but he, he also, also has rock has albums. Sense of survival of the fittest, trial by combat, and honor. Corn will never lie to you. Corn will never stab you in the back. Corn isn't about conniving and scheming. Corn is about straight up mono e mono, you versus me, get in the ring, we're gonna murder each other hard right now. It may not be a good thing at the end of the day, but it is that other side of the coin. Him and Zeke generally don't get along because I Zeke so. is a conniving schemer. Seems like there are clashes among them. Hope. Where there is change, there is change for your predicament. There is change for your problem. The hope of the galaxy, the ability to bend the world to your will, the idea that your fate is not set in stone, but in reality that you control your own destiny and can control it whenever you want. The changer of ways. Do what that thou wilt. Reach. And of course, Zeech and Nurgle hate each other because while Nurgle does represent stagnation, death, and decay, he also represents finality an ending. The fact that you can be mentally at peace knowing that you will end and how you will end. Fear of the unknown, fear of change is not present with Nurgle. With Nurgle, everything will rot and die yeah. and that provides that finality, that ability that this is over. We are all the same and we will all end the same. We know the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to live and die and rot. Mm -hmm. And with that, it brings peace of mind. Slanesh is a lot more simple. While they are the excess of emotion, they are also the representation of emotion. Slanesh embodies happiness. Slanesh embodies excitement and joy and pleasure. Not only in the sense of the physical, you know, Bam! Style of pleasure, <laughs> but also everything else like food. Boom, boom, shake the room! And uh, air on your cheek and sunlight, the feeling, emotion and feeling. All of that is also represented with Slanesh. So you have to ask why are they always represented as super evil skulls and spikes on everything? Because look how they look, they look metal as fuck. I don't really got an answer for you on that one. My assumption is that because mentally humans may think worse thoughts even if we don't act on them and therefore they're projected in the warp more that one's a little bit weird i don't know this is me spitballing right now but i don't know you need a you need a super bad guy you already got the imperium of man you need somebody to be a little bit worse than them so you got demons honestly mm. who cares i just want to buy like a bird magician Look yeah at that it. does look cool so cool so combining Shit. all this together on the tabletop, chaos demons are generally very melee based. They run Those in, are some badass figurines. Summoning and conjuring, tons of spells. Generally a little bit frail, but they have special saves to make them a little bit stronger. You've got giant demons and smaller demons. You got hordes of little boys and tons <laughs> of big guys. Demons are as they seem. 
demons. Nurgle is slow, uh, Korn is super scary in melee, you've got Zeech who are far more into psychers and spellcasting, and then Slaanesh who is all melee, really, really, really fast but squishy, but in lots of hordes. Of all whips and chains. And pain damage, of course. Spike so overall, the demons are a huge part of 40k and a massive threat to almost every single faction with a, the exception of a couple. However, the big part about demons is also transferred into the other nine Primarchs we didn't talk about, which are the Chaos Space Marines. Chaos Space Marines. So they got their own fleets over there too, huh? So Horse and all of his boys, okay. all of them in the Primarchs, they have all also become Chaos Boys. And all right, all so this is why he probably saved that weapons, from the first part. Specializing in so many different things, just like the Adeptus Astartes, the Angels of Death, the regular Space Marines. Chaos Space Marines aren't a whole lot different than the regular Space Marines. They have the same armor, you know, the same training and toughness. They specialize in different kinds of things. And also a lot of the Primarchs have ascended into greater de- is it greater demons? They're demon Primarchs at this point. Gigantic, horrifying man-demon hybrids that are mm. pretty awesome, if I'm gonna be honest. They look really, really cool. They look metal. But them and their associated legions that they are a part of are all kind of going out there and causing a large ruckus for everyone else. Considering the raw strength and firepower of a legion of Space Marines, imagine that entire legion just converting to chaos and immediately fighting you. <laughs> it's generally pretty horrifying. There's a lot of them, so I gotta write them down, but you've got the Emperor's Children with Primarch Fulgrim, loyal to Slanesh. These people, they are some messed up people. They're just sensory overload, tons of mm. drugs, tons of torture. And I think Fulgrim is like a, a Xenobite. Primarch right now, and oh god, I Xenobite, am terrified I said that correctly. what that man looks like, at least on the tabletop, because... Emperor's children are not good people. You've got the Iron Warriors, which are kind of like opposite of the Imperial Fists with Primarch Perturabo, I believe is his name. They're Chaos Undivided. They just kind of serve Chaos in a general aspect instead of choosing one of the four. But the Iron Warriors are the bare essentials. That's all you need. And they're basically entirely against. Look like Apocalypse Chris right there. Rival. Perturabo, I believe, is also still alive, and I'm also very interested to see what he looks like because. Demon Primarchs are badass. You've got the Night Lords with Primarch Conrad Kurz. Conrad Kurz is dead. Morbius? Is good because he's a sick fuck. But the Night Lords are generally about terror, terrorizing people and terrorism. They're generally about fear and probably so. Terror Squad. The World Eaters with Primarch Angron still alive. Also excited to see. Angron. If you think you've known an angry person, Angron is the angriest son of a bitch you will ever know. Angron removed parts of his brain that didn't make him angry, so he could be angrier. Eustace Babs on acid? Fuckers mad. Yes, stupid dogs. Tarian, they actually have their own special codex and their own major army on the tabletop. Death Where Tarian guard. himself is actually one of the models, and and look at him. <sighs> look at him. It's yeah, these so are some beautiful cool fucking models, of course, man. Nurgle based, obviously. What so is that a chain slow, arm or a saw? You've got the word bearers with Primarch Lorgar. Lorgar is, I believe, still alive. I don't know what's up with him at the current moment, but the word bearers are generally the people who caused all the major problems in the beginning. At least I blame them for it. They're little assholes. You got the Black Legion with Primarch Horus. Get fucked, nerd. You got the Alpha Legion with Primarch Alpharius Omegon. Chaos, I think. And then finally, you've got the Thousand Sons with Primarch Magnus the Nerd. Uh, the Thousand Sons also have their own book, Just Like the Death Guard. Magnus is also a tabletop model. He looks super cool, as you can tell. And they're all super heavily Psyker and kind of Egyptian themed. They mm. look pretty neat. But overall, with all of these Chaos Space Marine factions, you can play as a lot of, a lot of different ones, but the main ones that you can really work at are standard Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, as well as the Death Guard and Thousand Suns, as they are the most fleshed out, especially on the tabletop, at least. See this right here? This is a really good way to describe the Chaos Space Marines. What the thick-headed fools with their broken corpse of an emperor fail to understand is that not only can they never defeat us, but they cannot hide or flee or shield themselves from the triumph of chaos. They are finite and we are unbound, undivided. They must not err or they shall fall to heresy. 
All who fall join our cause. Every imperial fool who dares to open his eyes is a willing recruit. Sounds like they a WWE promo. Back our fury and might, and it consumes them. <laughs> Thus, you can see chaos is inevitable. We lurk not only beyond their grasp and at their gates, we lurk within the darkness of their souls, on the tip of their tongues, in their tortured dreams. We are them, but freed from the shackles of ignorance. We are them, grown strong, evolved. We are them. We are distinguished. So much more. As hardcore as that quote is, the saddest part is they're mostly right. Chaos is basically unkillable. You could probably get rid of Space Marines a decent amount, the Chaos Space Marines, that is. But every soul that dies goes to the warp. Every Chaos soul will end up back in the warp. And depending on how hard you killed them, they will come back at some point. Every demon you banish will return at some point. Yeah. Chaos is unstoppable. The warp is unending. And while maybe there is at some point some way to stop them somehow, the resources to do so, the requirements to do so, are so far beyond the reaches of man and the other races at the current moment that really it's just an unstoppable force that just keeps on coming and it's just barely being slowed. Yeah, Chaos shit's is crazy, by far bro. threat. They are without number, their legions are everywhere, and yeah. They're pretty scary. They outside so, with it. I promise. We're done with humans now. Let's talk about some Xenos. Yeah, let's see this, man. This is what I've been wanting to see. Because I thought we were kind of away from the so humans. Let's talk about the Eldar. I guess they're a component the of Eldari, chaos, though. Which are a super hyper-specialized and very technologically advanced race of, well, elf people. They were, as well, responsible for the creation of Slanesh. Slanesh. The demon god. It's like an evil slushy. That debauchery on a world-ending scale. See, back in the day, it was just Korn, Zeech, and Nurgle. And the Eldar are very, very ancient. Millions of years. These Eldar, however, have a bit of a sensory problem. You know, every kind of pain or feeling that you have is a little bit amplified compared mm. to the normal. However, with Eldar, as their race advanced so excessively, and they became so re self-reliant, and everything became so easy, there was no requirement for food production anymore, there was no shortages. Everything was basically done. Everyone was so comfortable. And that comfort breeded this weird sedation. And that sedation breeded the requirement Damn. for more and more debauchery. Debauchery! Everything you have can be so easily acquired, you will end up down this road of pure debauchery. All of the senses the Eldar had that were so powerful, things like feeling, happiness, sadness, and just evil and good, all needed to be satisfied and satiated. And the desire to satiate these senses grew more and more with worse and worse debauchery. It started yeah. off with things like sex and drugs. Got the Princess so Leia armor on over there. Because of these are the first things you generally turn to when requirements for living are so easily accessible. It would get to the point that made Sander Cohen in Bioshock look sane. Wow, like, this really? This is the kind of debauchery it led to. It was constantly satisfying and satiating these sexual and so they were forced to do the macarena fantasies that only elevated and elevated. And this was species wide. People started going down darker, more depraved. Why did it look like Piedmont from Digimon? As time went on, however, some people didn't entirely take to that. Some of the Eldar were looking at this depraved species that they had become and said. I no thanks for me, dog. I'm good. And they bailed. These are the craft world Eldar. They left on these giant continent-sized starships called craft worlds. They craft believed worlds. in learning the old ways of the Eldar and pushing away from this depravity and debauchery and going back to their main roots. And so they would segment themselves on these giant craft worlds far in the outer reaches of space. They, they like, there was the bougie types. Webway. Remember what we mentioned about warp travel with the Imperium? Well, the uh -huh. Eldar had something way safer called a webway. And the Eldar webway is actually like a pocket dimension kind of thing. And Subspace in pocket. Dimension, there were also more horrible, depraved groups and clans that would spend their time in there 
and if you imagine the debauchery was bad already, these were debauchery X10. So all of this <laughs> continued, and it continued, and it bloated until Slanesh hey. just burst forth. All that emotion, all that mental, well, thought processes, I suppose. Mental all orgasm. Of this in such a condensed space. Don't forget, this is all being shot, all their souls as well, into the warp. All this depravity right into the warp. So what happened? Boom, Slanesh was birthed and killed off 90% of the entire Eldar population. Untold trillions, trillions had their souls ripped from their bodies and their actual fleshy bodies devoured by Slanesh demons. Mm. The entirety of the Eldar race was eaten alive and their souls consumed to the Prince of Pleasure. Turned into his them. personal man, which fucked up. <laughs> it was so bad that it literally ripped a warp hole into the fabric of the materium called the Eye of Terror. Let me guess, that literally, literally, that unleashed like a lot of quasi horrifying gateway debaucherous demons from the materium and the immaterium right next to Cadia. The butt crack planet, and yes. It was horrifying. So this Slanesh, also known as She Who Thirst Horny by the on. Eldar, slaughtered the entire population, except for a couple. Those in the craft worlds were actually not affected by this as they were so far in the reaches of the galaxy. That crazy crack, that birth of Slanesh, only affected the ones in the center. So these craft world Eldar were able to escape, but Slanesh got their sights on them. Mm. Every time an Eldar will die, their soul doesn't just pass into the warp naturally. It goes straight to Slanesh, craft world or not. What about those people in the webway? Well, imagine that giant birth happening, but they were only able to just barely get a grasp onto you. Slanesh was just barely able to hold on. These people are the Dark Eldar, or also known as the Drukhari. Drukhari. The Eldar population right now is so massively small. It is minuscule. They look more the noble Eldar compared Eldar to the other ones, though. They don't even look like they're bad guys. The Eldar are consistently having issues trying to get their population up because... Like a female Fulgar from being hungered Killer Instinct. ...from Sonesh, they realize their entire species is doomed and they understand it very well. Since the time of the fall, our race has been haunted by what we, in our reckless pursuit of hedonistic indulgence, gave birth to. Though our dreams once overturned worlds and quenched suns, we are now but fitful shadows clinging to the edge of existence. All the stars in the sky cannot blot out the hateful glare of the red moon's eye. The birthing place of the great enemy pulses with all the malice of a demon that is dreaming, casting its shadow over all we have ever done and all we ever shall. Every twisted strand of fate and casting of the runes leads me to this time, to this place and it is clear that the final battle awaits me at the ancient crone worlds. A conflict the likes of which has not been seen since the Monkai warred amongst themselves as the first of a seer fell to his traitorous son is coming and all my steps lead towards it no matter that i walk other paths i see the stars stain red with the blood of the monkai and though their wars do not concern me i would gladly let them destroy one another i know that to avoid this fight is to condemn my race to inevitable doom and though all i see is darkness i know that i will not flinch from my destiny Mm. So that's now a read. Talk about cute plastic models. <laughs> Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. The first playable race we have for the Eldar are the craft world Eldar and living in those craft world starships I mentioned earlier. And each of them have their own kind of craft world, almost like a space marine league. They look each mystic. Craft world is it's in itself its own very mystic kind of group. And the Eldar themselves are very fast and rely a lot on trickery. They are squishy, a bit weak, but they're very in tune as psychers. Tons of psychers across the entire Eldar population, and their weaponry and abilities are fast and extremely hard hitting, but of course rather fragile. Understanding an Eldar's brain is an exercise in futility. They are all over the place in confusion and trickery on a whole galactic scale. They fight weird, they think weirder, and Eldar in their own right really rely on this to keep their species alive. Gotta be they outliers, man. You gotta think weird. 
and the strangeness of what they do if they truly want to not be immediately murdered and slaughtered wholesale thanks to their entirely small population. However, I must say that it seems like their population is getting slightly better. These craft worlds hold millions upon millions of people. And as they continually, you know, reproduce and have their craft worlds expand, losing a few people in battle while it's nothing. Lot, they aren't really losing what's extremely precious to them. Yes. It's not like every single death means the death of their species. It seems like they're kind of on the upturn a little bit. Hell they're yeah, man. We on our way up. Man. We on the come up. Every time Pause. Dies. But they are definitely doing a little bit better than they were before. Eldar are fast, cunning, and what they don't make up for in tankiness, they make up for in extremely advanced weaponry. They also call humans Monkai, which is something I mentioned earlier. Monkey. Um, that is a derogatory space freezer. Humans in the world. Well, I'm gonna say world. space freezer. Freezer um, exists in space. Why is it called Monkai? Well, it's because you can't in your game call people monkeys. <laughs> On the tabletop, exactly what I said. I was wondering, I was like, why does it sound so familiar? Squishy, hit like trucks and move at Mach 5. Fast, hit hard, die fast. Exactly how it sounds. They've been good for a very long time, too. We bring only death and leave only carry on. It is a message even a human can understand. They crash out. Eldar. But they crash out in a good so, way, though. Jukari. Let's talk about the Dark Eldar. On today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. Satanic Gilmore girl. So those people I mentioned in the webway, in the super deranged cults, and the depraved people of the Eldar, in the webway, they didn't quite get a hold onto them. So that actually like has them, but it has them on like by the pinky finger. And they're slowly being consumed by Slanesh, but they found out they can stave her off by doing Slanesh things. Mm. The Dark Eldar are by far the worst, most horrifying, disgusting, depraved, and brutal race in all of War. Even more disgusting than the big These bloated guy? Entirely a group of people whose full purpose to save their species from extinction, to go into planets, raid them, and take as many slaves as they possibly can to torture them for one, five, ten, twenty, a million years. Because that torture will Feeds keep them. them from dying. They look very BDSM style Ugh. too. They definitely have a lot more spiky bits and they have a lot more... It's like death by snoo snoo to the extreme. To but let's... Example. Let's say you are an upstanding imperial citizen, living life on a regular planet. You get invaded by the Necrons. The Necrons will shoot you with a de-atomizer and you will be destroyed in a millisecond and that's it. <laughs> Not the worst way to go. Not uh, you at are invaded all. by chaos marines or something. You crush to you death. Take a bolter shot to the head or a chain sword across your stomach and you get cut in half. Painful, but not the worst. To the point. Uh, the orcs arrive. They beat you to death. Hurts, but, you know, whatever. Tyranids, they eat you alive. It's pretty rough. The Dark Eldar. The Dark Eldar. Uh, this is going to get a little graphic. I apologize. <laughs> you pray you die. You don't. You are instead taken as a human slave. Your life will be endless work and agony 24 7. They will make sure you can't not die. That's and every call center. Satisfies them. They will hook you up to all manner of torture devices. They will inject pain based, like stimuli drugs directly into your nervous system. They will slowly run razor blades across your skin. Oh, they will fillet you and just pull out your teeth and your fingernails one by one. This they is what happens when you don't return to slide. You suffer the ultimate curse. So they can do it again. They will murder and torture and use the R word that rhymes with grape, your entire family in front of you. Oh, and yeah. do the exact same thing to them. You yourself will also be rhymes with grape. They make Berserk and look like the and this will Disney version of Berserk. Until you are no longer satisfying to them. And then you will be contorted crushed yeah they make berserk like the disney version of hellraiser some form of trophy a fleshy trophy or a ring or a couch or a tv stand <laughs> or perhaps a wonderful hat while you are of course still alive and breathing and you will become a moaning fleshy trophy for eternity and that is what happens when you are taken by the dark eldar they are the most depraved most horrifying race in all of 40k they look the part 
and they do it so they all don't die. They are literally forced to do this because mm. if they don't, Sonesh's grip will get harder and they will have their souls pulled away. So long as they keep doing this, Sonesh is like, you're doing good, man. You're doing <laughs> solid. You keep, you keep that shit up, you elf ear bastards. That's, that's, the, that's the Dark Eldar. That's the Drakari. They are horrible. On the tabletop, the they Sonesh are actually offer pizza like parties? Eldar, but... Because I know damn cheaper. well they ain't getting no they promotions. They are squishier than the Eldar, but they hit generally even harder. Fast attacks, skirmishers, really quick, speedy, like get around them, do a lot of damage, get away kind of stuff. That's most of the Dark Eldar. Hmm. Look at the definition of grim dark in a dictionary. You'll find a picture of the Dark Eldar and Sev from Public Commando. A quote <laughs> from uh, Mr. Vect. We are the lords of despair, masters, masters of, of terror. terror. Dread and agony are our meat and wine, and they are plentiful indeed. Use your eyeballs like hors d'oeuvres, man. Dark Eldar. Let's talk about the Harlequins. Harlequins. What's the matter, Andy? Don't you want to have some fun? <laughs> the Harlequins are a bizarre race of Eldar. They're demonic clown performers. They're like a weird mix of Sander Cohen from Bioshock and... And that Jay chick from, from Reboot, from of the cartoon, like the CG cartoon. Theme. They're, they're artists of death and perfectors of their craft. They do not belong to craft worlds or any of the weird Drukhari people. They guard something called the Black Library, which is this giant tome of never-ending knowledge deep in the heart of the Eldar webway, and also guarded by their god named Kegarok, I believe Kegarok. is his name. He is the laughing god. But... It's the Eldar's laughing god? And these are the Harlequins, the Harlequin clowns. These are Eldar clowns, okay? So imagine the things that an Eldar, these depraved individuals, would find funny. And this is the god of that. It's, it's a horror clown. These are gods of horror for us normal people. For them, they're like, oh, oh, oh it's so funny. They're all dying horribly. <laughs> oh, 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 Poor they're you. They're very bizarre and difficult to describe. Uh, they've escaped the ruinous powers of Slash somehow, but their main thing is guarding that black library. And the Harlequins just... They're demon clown performers. They're barely any models on the tabletop. They're mm. good in melee. They're Limited. They're demon clowns. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I got a quote. It is too easy for an Eldar to embrace the obscene virtues of chaos, for Slanesh is nothing more than a manifestation of the Eldar mind in its most wild and unconstrained form. Human morality is meaningless to the Eldar, and to the dark side of the Eldar mind, all life is to be expended at a whim. Cruelty and generosity are but the impulse of a moment. Beauty and sensuality are virtues that can be expressed in bloodshed just as easily as in song. To an unfettered Eldar mind, there is neither sanity nor madness, but mm. merely a wave of perfect existence fulfilled by its own savage momentum. Yeah, very, that's a very strange. complex Harlequins, Drukhari, Eldar, quote. They are an anomaly that they look badass as fuck, though. I like the jackets. Completely easy to understand in comparison. They range from rekindling their civilization to horrifying murder and also clowns. They are all over the place, but honestly, they represent quite well and are rather interesting, especially with the whole Sonesh murdering everyone bit. So, Sonesh got the fucking yeah. empire in a chokehold or something, man. Ma, they following me, Ma. They following me. Who, who follow you? The <laughs> The Tyranids. Now, you want to talk something a little more fun, a little more simple than all this crazy Eldar shenanigans? Let's talk the Tyranids. They're bugs. Do they look like Zerg? Hell yeah, they look like Zerg. They do. Do they wild like Zerg? Because they were actually supposed to uh, be what Zerg were. Uh, uh, Starcraft was supposed to be a 40k game. Yeah, they, they, they did explain that. It looks so much like Eldar, Zerg, and the Imperium of Man. Like, kind of space marine-y. Yeah. Marines, huh? They look a little bit space marine to mm -hmm. me. Maybe. Super thick. I don't know. Small you heads. Fucked up on that one, Games Workshop, didn't you? Tyranids <laughs> are a fucked giant up now, Phoenix, Dr. Wu. of unfathomable proportions. These are giant, extremely bio advanced hive mind organisms that are basically all about absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to evolve and mutate to be extremely potent and powerful and kill and eat anything in their path they are probably the least evil 
faction in all of 40k because huh. all they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom nom the entire galaxy. They hangry and we food. Also, this Tyranid hive mind has a presence in the warp. In fact, Tyranids in their own right have a massive presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow in the warp specifically, where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird ability to kind of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet. And how do you get help across the stars? Well, you need the warp because you need that for interstellar travel. Yeah. So with people unable to call for help from the Tyranids, these are just easy pickings. And an entire giant Tyranid hive fleet comes out of all It's like we need a VPN, like a warp VPN to block these motherfuckers. Mass and turning them and all of their other Tyranids into even more advanced monsters. They come in oh, so many leeches. varieties too, all in based on what is important. Tiny little ripper swarms for s scouting and having little dudes eat people up to the Hormagons, Termagons, and Gene Stealers, all the way to the Hive Guard and the Exocrines and the Swarm Lord, to Hive Tyrants and their giant battle fleets, and even something as crazy as the Hierophant Bio Titan. The Tyranids come in all forms and sizes depending on what they require. They look like some from Starship really Troopers. At anti biological weaponry. There is no way you can plague them or blight them. They have extremely strong armor, uh, carapaces, and such. Tyranids are, are nigh perfect organisms and are pretty spooky when it comes down to how they handle all of their genetics. Yeah, fuck around and found out, find out what's a creature, basically. They keep on creating new horrifying organisms to spread across the galaxy. And you know what the most terrifying part of the Tyranids is? We might be surrounded. There have been like around six or seven Tyranid Hive fleets. Behemoth, Kronos, all these different kinds of hive. That map is so bad. That is bad bit right at its finest. From different points. Horrible. Different sections of the Milky Way galaxy have had different Tyranids come through. And that is horrifying. Because as far as we know, we could just be surrounded on all sides by Tyranids. <laughs> The only reason you may not hear a whole lot about Tyranids is because it's a little bit hard to have a bunch of story off of one hive mind genocidal monsters. All these giant bugs swarming in, killing and eating everybody and evolving. Well, I mean, as cool as there are, there's some cool characters, the Swarm Lord, Old One-Eye. You can't really have a whole bunch of major character-based stories around them. As awesome as they are, they're simple. They want to eat you. They want to eat you and absorb your biomass. They are simple bugs. If you want something a little more complex, talk gene stealer cults. I can have all the pot I want, I get around faster than walking, <laughs> and wherever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. Gene stealer yeah. cults are a special brand of tyranid that can slowly infect themselves into different kinds of society. And by infecting them, they can rise up to where they all pray and believe in these real like regular humans pray and believe into their tyranid hive mind gods. And these brood lords and I think they're called patriarchs yeah. all can turn an entire world all based into gene stealers. And these are called gene stealer cults. An entire hive world of the Imperium can be turned into nothing but servants of the tyranid masters just by infecting them and screwing with their genetic code a little bit. They also have this cool, like, Mad Max look. They do. I was just going to say that. One of the bigger threats they look like the War Boys from uh, Mad, Bra Mad, Mad Max Fury Road. They're up there, though, because you, Dingus, stepped on a bug in middle school. Asshole. There is a cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade, it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose that functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. And all we can do is to try to stop the swarms of bioengineer monsters it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salvage our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, it must know us as nothing but oh, prey. Tyranids, they're cool. But are they as cool as the orcs? The orcs. Orcs, 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 orcs. Ziggy zaggy, ziggy zaggy, orc, orc, orc. So, yes, the, the green monsters, the green tide, the green. Green boys. These orcs, they are in fact a race in 40k. 
The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons. They're big boys. They have axes. Big brutes. And they have got big old teeth, and they want to kill everything. With still toe Tims. So many of them. The only reason they haven't taken over in the entire galaxy is they can't, can't stop murdering each other. <laughs> orcs are so cool. Orcs don't have philosophy. Orcs don't have existential crisis. What matters is who's the biggest orc. You listen to that guy, because he the biggest orc. He big orc. Big orc knows best. You win to the power of imagination. Big blister booty. Of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage war with machines that should not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. How does one battle an enemy that defies all logic? As an orc, you're, you're enjoying life. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat Slaughter the shit out of any and everything. Orc is the Even your child gets slaughtered. Everything. He is the boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent, which is just <laughs> hilarious to me. Those are orcs. You're, you fight. You like to fight. Your whole purpose is to Would fight. Would you like a spotted dick? Because you want to wage Full war. of bullet you holes. Your boss over there. And you better listen to the boss. Because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you. And make you an example for the other orcs. And then you can't fight because orc dead. And orc dead is... Orc dead can't fight. Useless orc. orc dead. Orcs. They scrap together machines out of parts that don't make any sense. And because cool. they believe, they have the mental imagination that that machine will run, it'll run. If that machine's out of gas, you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs, and the biggest orc is behind the wheel, and you run out of gas, some orc behind you is like, oh, oh, Zog, we're out of gas. And the big orc is like, no, we're not. Use I the blood. I built the fucking gas tank up earlier, and all the other orcs are like, oh, yeah, I, you did do that. And then you turn the, the fucking mech back on, and it works again. Does it have gas? <laughs> Probably not, but it works. The power of imagination. It's running they off their sheer red idiotic red willpower. It goes faster. They paint things purple because it's the sneakiest color. You want to know why? You ever seen a purple orc? Oh. Didn't fucking think so. Orcs are also like ancient as hell. They're I've seen a brown orc before. Time but that's the wrong franchise. They were called quirks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent. Now they're just orcs and they're big, dumb, and they smack things. But they're pretty spooky. They're not very well armored, but they hit really hard, and it's called the Green Tide because there are so, so many of them. Many orcs. Yeah, there are about as many orcs as there are Tyranids. Maybe more. Who knows? They crew they runs deep, murdering each other, so it's not too bad of an issue. Orcs are entirely comic relief. They have a self-contained population, though. They're together. That makes no sense. Their vehicles don't work the way they're supposed to, but they work because they think it works, because they imagine that it works. <laughs> orcs care only about who is the biggest orc, and they will follow the biggest I wish that's orc. how the world and would work. The economy the wouldn't be so orc, bad as it is today. Orc. And then when they go and they issue a wa, a wa is just wa in orc. <laughs> they murder everybody and everything. What and about an arg? Of green orcs who are just excited to be hitting something. They don't care that they're hitting Eldar or the Imperium or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to beat shit up. That's orcs. And on the tabletop, they are a total coin mm. flip and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc player. I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy. I see why. Bad guy. Orc players have this kind of fun to them because when you play them, you are completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's mm. the thing. Guardsmen, Imperial Guardsmen, when they shoot, they roll a dice and on a four up, they'll hit their target. They have a 50% chance. Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher because they're well trained. Adeptus Custodians, they the hit custodians, on Custodians, yeah. Super well trained. Super Orcs, elites. They hit on a five or higher. But if they roll a six, they get to make another shot with anything from the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whip. <laughs> one of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill an orc. <sighs> They're so wacky and silly. But the thing is, is if you roll well, you roll high and you keep rolling high, you are going to crush people. And if you <laughs> don't, you lose. That's your ass. I mean, that's what you get when you play orcs. That's Assed out, man. You play orc, it's a coin flip. I love it though. It's a 50% chance of crashing out.
things won't go your way. It's just the roll of the dice. You're playing a dice game. But if you're going to have fun and you want to be stupid and you want to be silly, you're going to play some damn orcs. But on the opposite side of the fun part of this, let's talk about the Necrons. Necrons. The Necrons are spooky, scary skeletons and very grimdark again. They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back in the day, they were just undead Egyptian mm. space terminators. And they still look that way, but now they actually have a story. So way back in the day, you had the Necron tier. Kind of see a theme here, Eldari, Eldar, Quark, yeah. Quark, Necron, Necron tier. So the Necron tier were this race of generally kind of shitty. Like people. Prometheus from Prometheus Not and they Bob. They were personally shitty because their lives were awful. They were ill fated to a horrible existence of like radiation and a terrible planet they lived on, and everything just really sucked. Being a Necron tier was just really depressing. They really were looking for immortality. They were extremely reliant on the hope that they would eventually find the key to living forever and just stave off this horrible nature that they were thrust upon them. And therefore, they could become the most dominant race in the galaxy. Mm. And they found this group. They're called the Old Ones. Imagine them kind of like the Forerunners in Halo or the Zelnaga in StarCraft, right? These Old Ones were these sp strong, oh, pretty much omnipotent beings. And they, of course, knew the key to immortality. So the Necrons went to them and said, please, show us your ways. And the Old Ones said, piss off. Fuck off. off. Really <laughs> but they do not want to share their secret of immortality with the Necrons. The Necrons, of course, took this very well okay. and waged war with them. Kind of like a united banner. The Necron different dynasties didn't really like each other. But under this one man, the Silent King, he thought the best way to unite his race was to do this giant war with the Old Ones out of spite for them keeping the secret of immortality to them. This was known Damn. as the War in Heaven. In heaven. And this is actually like a multi-stage war. Because during this War in Heaven, they discovered the Star Gods, a whole new race of people known as the Catan. What? The Catan. These Star Gods were also very much like old ones, almost omnipotent beings. And they too had the key to immortality. And so the Necrons went to them and said, hey, can you help us fight off the old ones? Can you help us kill these old ones, you, the Catan? And the Catan said, yes. And in fact, we can help provide you with the immortality you so desperately seek. So the silent king of the Necrons decided to make a pact with the Catan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality. Let's go, we'll show them. This, of course, had been a horrendous trap. And the Necrons were dragged in chains to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped <sighs> from them, replaced with nothing but a skeleton metal warriors. Metal as their souls were ripped from their body and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They got chonk on the souls of the Necrons. Mm. As this was their plan all along, they consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron tier and turned them all into unwilling robotic slaves just to serve their will. And That's then, sad, their but they brought it on themselves, the though. Army, they pointed their guns at the Old Ones, and the Catan continued their domination of the stars and their genocide complete and full genocide of these old ones. Wow. The old ones did their best to stave it off. They even created other races, the Eldari and the Orcs, to try to fight off the horrifying Necron army and the Catan above them. But there was absolutely no possible chance for them. And the old ones were absolutely extinguished across the galaxy. Their entire race completely removed. Full-on, 100% genocide. However, during all this, the Catan, so just infatuated... What if they lost they control started of ...started fighting each other for fun, for sport, and for small differences, doesn't matter. The Catan, with these over overpowered people, they're gonna eventually hit each other at some point. Mm -hmm. And as they began just menially fighting each other, the Eldari and the Orcs actually started pushing on the Catan's borders a little bit, giving them a little bit of a run for their money. 
And as this continued, this is when the silent king, who retained his consciousness, decided to leap into action. Okay. Full scale revolt. Let's go. I, I had an agony suspicion and this, this was going to happen. Was bloody as the entire Necron army was surged off to destroy these star gods. They were able to, just after suffering horrendous losses, were able to turn the tide of the war. And they took these Katam and they blasted them. Because as these star gods are unkillable, they were able to break them into thousands of shards and entrap Trump. them in yeah. giant stasis vaults. That's... To now actually be slaves <laughs> to the Necrons. Hell the yeah. Necrons having the entirety of their old gods enslaved to them, they realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Krorks. And so what they did is they retreated into giant stasis tombs in order to preserve their energy and their strength for when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. And then some dingus Adeptus Mechanicus guy <laughs> middled the green Those bastards. The Necrons are back and they see all these primitive races on their lawns and they think, get the fuck, fuck out of off. it. Necrons yes. Are back, super advanced, and they are here to reclaim the galaxy that they so rightfully believe is theirs. Now, on a tabletop, they're a lot like that. Tons of undead Egyptian skeleton robots that when they die, they just get right back up because yeah. they keep on reanimating. Hard to kill. Tons of crazy stuff. You can use the Catan themselves. That is cool. I them. love that design. Pretty cool. The Necrons are the one of the three major events in 40k. The Horus Heresy, the Fall of the Eldar, and the Awakening of the Necrons are all pretty substantial events. And the Necrons themselves are pretty, pretty dang cool as well. Here's a good quote from a wonderful Dawn of War game. Lucky creatures, as long last you have found the tranquility of death. I was like you once, clinging to life and blind to the truth. When I uncovered the truth, I too shuddered and pale with fear. Deep in these catacombs, I was remade. Here, my brethren slumbered for eons while the living grew like weed. My lord knew this day would come. He had plans for us all. We would purge this world once more. So come, poor victims of life. We will grant you tranquility in these crypts. Kronos will be a tomb world once more. Necrons are also pretty smug. Trays in the infinite especially. A little, little dickhead. Mm. But speaking of dickheads, last race. Let's talk the Who's Tau. this? We made a fucking walkie. The Tau the Empire. The formation of the Tau Empire What's is not entirely understood. The anime However, school girl a long, legs. long time ago, many thousands of years ago, uh, in the 40k world that is, some Imperial navigation vessels were going around through different areas, and they saw a primitive race, blue people, smacking each other with sticks and stuff. Blue man group. Uh, yeah. Dumb. Blue devil, d devil, die, motherfucker. Then this giant warp storm occurred right in that major area, unable to be breached. Then, once that warp storm 6,000 years later subsided, hello, those little sticks. Well, they decided to actually have no war of any kind and all just unite together under one flag of the Tau Empire. And now they have gigantic starships Ooh. and Gundam robots and lasers and railguns and mechs. And they are here to ruin your day for the greater good. That is generally- Eat your heart out, Gundam wing. wing. They have this kind of feeling of this homogenous group. All species can go underneath the banner of the greater good. The greater good is their idea of the fundamental increase and help of all. In fact, they are most likely the most like the covenant in Halo, where they have the overarching prophets, being the ethereals, who are actually kind of dicks and, and like to pull at strings a little bit, but then you have all these different races directly underneath them, and they all work together in this big group as this large, foreboding race that tries to spread their weirdly pseudo-religious influence <laughs> across the galaxy. The alien is not intrinsically evil. Do not hate him. Pity him, his ignorance. Seek to understand his differences and equate him with his this inadequacies. inadequacies. Only then will he accept his place in the greater good. Ugh. That is generally the Tau. And if you're kind of wondering like what their mainly big stick is, well, they're all about big robots and mechs. They have mm. laser rifles and rail. They are sci-fi to the gills. Pods and heavy rail Fucking rifles, Armitage. Rail 
and burst Armor core. And ion accelerators and void shields and all this stuff. And that is generally what the Tau's all about. But you're probably thinking... <laughs> Boy, over there. Got a little space blunt this rolled up. sound that evil. This doesn't sound very grim, dark Warhammer. And you'd be right. The Tau Empire really don't have that much of a horrifying, grim, dark style like everybody else. They're much more younger, new age thing. In fact, they're probably a lot less evil and a lot even better than they are now back in the day because they liked having like that good guy faction. But a lot of us who really liked the, the dark, depressing style of Warhammer didn't really like it that much. So, see, the Tau get a lot of hate, and a lot of that hate isn't necessarily unjustified. It's mainly from a tabletop perspective, but as you can see from all the visuals I've shown you recently, they don't really fit in the 40k universe very well. They lack that super dark, dramatic, kind of high gothic level the Imperium has. They don't have the weird, kind of like grungy stuff that Chaos or say the Orcs do. And the Necrons and the Eldar have their own specific style as well. The Tau really do look like something out of Gundam. And while that isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does definitely not fit too well. Mm. There's that. There's also the tabletop problem. Uh, in tabletop, Tau are horrible at melee combat, but really, with fucking good robots at range combat. So they blast everyone from. Really How would they be good at close quarters? A million rules to make it so that it's nearly impossible for you to get into melee combat. So it basically Ugh. just forces you to bottleneck the game into one specific gameplay style, which is gun to gun. Mm. And if you're doing gun to gun, they're going to win every time. Because <laughs> exactly. Of the Tau, and the Tau are really damn good at shooting. So it's one of those things that make the Tau generally rather hated and a lot of different reasons uh, for that, uh, both from style and such. But this is actually one of the things I wanted to end this video with, is that the Tau, while they have their issues, you should not be discouraged from playing them. I'll make plenty of Tau weeaboo jokes, of course I will, <laughs> but it's all generally in good fun. Anyone who legitimately doesn't want you to play a faction is an idiot and you shouldn't be giving them the time of day. You pick what you think is cool and what you like. No, you man, I ain't going for it. Factions get better and they get worse. It's like all these new friendly factions got to go. You should only be playing what you think is cool. You like the look, you like the models. If you're talking tabletop, it's like Leroy Smith from Tekken 7. Every time is what you think too is new friendly because things change all the time. But the universe of Warhammer has so much going for it. Every faction has something interesting. Every character has a story and there's a million stories to be told. The universe is vast and exciting, and while it is dark, depressing, and horrible, that is the damn charm. And out of everything I've told you in these two videos, is there anything you could take away is the reason why so many of us are so into this series and why we like it so much. Because with so much variety, such an expansive universe, and so much that can be done, you can find yourself having a pretty great time. Yeah, Thank you so much for sounds like this it. Video. I hope it has been informative to you. If you'd like to see more of me, Bricky, you have twitch.tv slash Bricky for my streams. You have my merchandise site in which I... Got to cop that hoodie right there in the middle. ...underneath this because I had to wear this so it wasn't black or white for the green screen. Which is a little unfortunate, <laughs> but it's fine. If you'd like to see merch, it is in the description. Also, if you'd like to support me on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Bricky for more videos like this, then that would also be wonderful. So Twitch, merch, Patreon, anything if you want to support, that would be fantastic. I'd appreciate it. If not, I'm just stoked you got all the way to the end of the video, and that is enough for me. Pat myself so, on the back. We're going to be having some more content like this out in the future. Thank you so much for uh, sticking around this long and uh, being with me through this pretty rough time. Uh, that's, uh, I think, all I got. What's going on, also, my man? Before I go, let me leave you with my favorite Warhammer quote. What if this was recorded during the COVID? At the power of the last gun has never ran through a field of a thousand of them. Hmm. Bye bye. That was nice. That was nice. But, guys, this concludes the reaction to every single Warhammer 40k Fashion Explained Part Dose. Really enjoyed that one, man. I will say that I wasn't as hyped as I was during the first part because the first part is like the introduction, you know. That's that's like the first movie. It's like not every franchise or, you know, library of videos is going to have its Empire Strikes Back. 
But I did enjoy the more darker tone, you know, because you guys did mention that to me when I had referenced Berserk and I was like, is this is as dark as Berserk? And you was like, no, this makes Berserk look like fucking Hellraiser meets Sesame Street. And that's the case because we, we entered into that darker territory and we see all these crazy mofos that are all, you know, like a byproduct of the gods of chaos. And that was something that I was very much interested in knowing more about. It's like this space opera. It's, this is like space opera at its finest, where every character they are just so fleshed out, and it's almost like on par with something. If you guys are familiar with One Piece, you know One Piece is finally getting its notoriety for being one of those vast, expansive worlds where each character has been, you know, just meticulously written out and fleshed out. For you know, you can just choose from any one of them and that's what i see when i look at this right here like all the different factions there's a favorite for everybody i'll still say that out of all the factions i really think adeptus mechanicus is one of my favorites and also the sisters of battle they're like one of my favorites too you know i always call i call them sister act apocalypse like if they had whoopi goldberg up in there she'll be leading the charge be throwing explosive bibles at your ass if you don't agree to their philosophies and religions and shit that's the ones i like but when it comes to this list i probably say that the uh the the dark eldar are um some of my faves and also um the necrons because i love their story you know how they went from being this race that was like eager to you know know something in terms of immortality just gain that knowledge but unfortunately the ones that they were seeking it from they kind of frowned upon them or you know didn't necessarily want to give out those secrets so they ended up turning against them and they the ones that they sought out for help ended up turning against them and turned them into their slaves but you know you always get that come up story where one character, you know, they gain their their powers back, their freedom, and you know they fight back against the system. So yeah, that's probably one of the um, the deeper forms of lore that I really enjoyed out of these factions. You know, what I'm saying I would really love to see a movie from this. I know it it's probably a tall order. And I think the best way they can go about doing this is just to go full CG animated because we kind of seen how that goes with other franchises such as Warcraft where they try to do it with live action, but not everything is translated quite well. So I would love to see a CG animated somewhere on the same realm as those Final Fantasy movies from years back where we actually get it made by the studio. Um, I don't know where to go now, guys. Like, is there a part three to this? Because now it's talking about the Space Marines. Like, I'm looking at the other recommendations from Bricky, and it looks like they're talking about the Space Marines. So I'm trying to figure out what's the next voyage we should go on. What is it? Um, if there's any recommendations, please leave them in the comment section below because your boy really wants to know because I am very much interested in this. I try to do my due diligence when I can, but there is so much to take in and I really just love hearing from Bricky because like I said, guys, even though he made mistakes along the way, you can't really help but make those, especially on these videos that are kind of more impromptu than just super scripted and thought out. I just enjoy the passion that Bricky, you know, ex exudes when he talks about these things because you know that's what I like about like people where I interact with that are fans of something that I'm not familiar with you know I'm not really initiated in it but when a person is just that you know they can bring all these things to life and make you more interested in it than you initially were so yeah anyways it's gonna do it for us today guys once again, I'm going to hit the light goal to 1,000 because you guys did such an exceptional job of getting the initial video to 1,000. So let's do the same for this one, man. Smash the shit out of that like button so we can get some more reactions to Warhammer 40K. And let me know what I should react to next. The one that gets the highest votes up in the comment section, I will make that a priority. But once again, this is your boy RBG, aka the Random Black Gamer. We ain't seen any reactions. I'll catch you guys on the next reaction to Warhammer 40K. Peace.